All right, we're going to go ahead and kick off. Uh, my name is, is, is Gordon Flake. I'm the CEO of the Perth US Asia Center, and I'd like to welcome all those hearty souls who the, the week of Australia Day uh, have signed on to join us online for a webinar uh, providing information on an exciting new development at the Perth US Asia Center, the launch of our first ever micro-credentialed course through the University of Western Australia uh, and with support of the state government. Uh, this course looks at Australia and the Indo-Pacific, understanding our strategic connections to Asia. Most of you who have known us through the past uh, 10 years will know that we've done a lot of roundtables. We've done a lot of big public lectures. We do a lot of research and publications, regular newsletters. Uh, we reach out to you, our community, through a lot of different means. Um, uh, and all of it, we hope, has broad educational benefit to our society. Uh, to government, to business, to individuals, to academia, uh, to our community. Um, but this is a, a step in a different direction. It, it is actually taking much of the work that we have been doing for the last uh, nine plus years and putting it in a format that we think will be helpful uh, to you, the community, to you as individuals, to again, to businesses, to governments beyond that. Uh, so today, my, my role is relatively easy. Uh, I get to introduce a, a, a close colleague and friend and and the, the real driving force behind this initiative, Dr. Lisa Cluett. I think all of you who have engaged with the center will know Dr. Cluett. She uh, serves as our external relations director, but really whether it's website or publications or interviews or media or anything dealing with the, the external community, she has been the leader on. And we're very fortunate that uh, we were able to, to steal Lisa from the University of Western Australia uh, probably getting close to six years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lisa uh, has a, a great academic background as well in terms of putting these things together. So uh, I can't think of anybody better to actually explain the course, its intent, uh, how it's structured, what it's supposed to do than the person who actually put it together. So without further ado, mm -hmm. Lisa, thank you. I'm going to turn it over to you for some initial remarks and then I'll answer some pre-submitted questions as well as those that we might have on this short uh, information webinar. Thanks, Gordon, and thanks everyone for joining us. It's great to see that there's such interest in the micro-credential. So our aim today is to, to take you through how the course works uh, and what it covers and answer any questions you might have if you're considering taking the course. Uh, you should see that the chat function is live in the webinar. So if you have questions as we go, then feel free to pop them in there and we'll we'll get to those um, shortly. But I've already had a look at the, um, the questions that have been pre-submitted. And so what I've done is I have just developed a bit of some dot points really to cover the key things. So the biggest question everybody seemed to have is how does it work? Um, so I've quickly, <laughs> people wanna know what the commitment is, totally fair enough. So essentially, every Monday across the eight weeks, a new block of content is released. Um, it's released at the moment. It'll be available from about six in the morning, um, but you can do it any time. So there is no class attendance. Um, the class content is about an hour's worth of an interactive module that's a combination of videos and podcasts and things to read um, and web, web links to check out. And it also includes some practice quiz questions. So you can do that anytime you like during that week. You can do it all in one go. You can stop and start. You can revisit that. But that's the delivery of the course content. Each week, there are also four tasks to do on your own. So they ask you to have a look at the course content, reflect on how it might apply to your work and your, your real life. Um, it'll ask you to think about the new terms you're using, uh, the new ideas that you're being presented with. And when you're doing that, you'll be asked to post on the discussion boards. So you'll be able to see what each other is writing and I will be moderating that. I will check that every day. And so you will get replies and responses to your posts um, as they develop. When the class content becomes available, it stays available for the whole eight weeks. So week one will be available all the way through to the end. And the next Monday, the week two content will be available. And that will carry on throughout the eight weeks. 
a few people have said, oh, I might be traveling in the middle, like, can I, can I catch up? So that's the model we've used, that once that content is available, it will stay there. So you can do that anytime you like. During the course, then there are three optional webinars and they'll be pretty much like this. So there'll be Gordon and I, and perhaps other members of our research team online to help you maybe discuss some of the concepts that you're not very familiar with, to go over content that you didn't understand, to answer any questions, um, and you'll be able to register for those and pre-submit questions and they will be recorded. So if you can't attend live, then you can still submit your question and we will answer that for you. The final assessment is available on the morning of the Monday of week eight, and it is 24 multiple choice questions. Um, some of them are on the simpler end of things and some of them ask you to apply your knowledge in more in depth. So that quiz becomes available on the Monday of the final week, and it will stay available for the whole of week eight and a further two weeks after that. So if you can picture that takes you all the way up to Easter and the quiz and all the content will be available for a further two weeks. So during that time, you can revisit content and you can have your two attempts at the quiz. The course also um, allows you to really be enrolled as a UWA student. That will mean you'll have access to the university services. That means the library and IT, you will have a student number. If you have been a university student before here, it will connect with your existing records. And yes, uh, there was a question asked before the, this webinar that asked if it, if it counts towards um, courses, and it does. It, it's called advanced standing. So if you ever wanted to enroll um, in a course here at UWA, uh, this counts towards two credit points for anything you wanted to enroll in. Um, a quick overview on then on what it covers. And this really is based on the premise that international relations, we very much feel, is everybody's business, but it's not everybody's background. It's not a case of everybody knowing some of the language, the terms, the history, the nuances around international relations that they might feel they need to engage in whatever sector they work in. So you can see there, there's eight uh, themes throughout. They all uh, correspond to one of the weeks. It follows a logical process to help us understand really how things are now, um, really coupled with how things have evolved to be in the situation where we talk about the Indo-Pacific so freely, and then we move on to future opportunities. So I should, I should say it goes really from the past to the present to the future. But I just wanted to say a quick word about what it's not as well. I mean, this isn't an in-depth history lesson. This isn't business coaching for people wanting to do trade with Asia. This is about big picture, strategic ideas, geopolitics and geostrategic thinking. Also, as part of the course, you get four bespoke downloadable resources, which are yours to keep. Uh, one of them uh, is an Indo-Pacific explainer, talks about the Indo-Pacific, what it is, what it means, and includes the map. The second one is a glossary of all the terms that you hear in international relations and geopolitics that you might not be familiar with, and that will be available to all participants. And then there's two uh, downloadable guides, one on free trade agreements and one on defense agreements. So that's what it covers. It covers those themes and it has resources that go with it. Um, I just was going to show you very briefly how easy it is to navigate the learning management system. You can see that the eight sessions here are listed. Um, this is where you will go to, to click on the links as, they, as, as the weeks progress. And then there's discussion boards and the final assessment. So you will get more training. Um, at, there's an orientation video if you do choose to sign up to the course that shows you how to navigate through all the materials. So I'll stop there. I think I've covered most of the questions that were, uh, were pre-submitted. I know there are some other nuances people might want to ask, but I'm happy now for you, Gordon, to think um, what else we might want to cover, people thinking that they might want to do the course. Well, thank you. And, and again, we appreciate everybody who signed on for this information center. Uh, we are monitoring that chat function. So if there's something specific we haven't answered, just pop it in there. We'll get to that in turn. Um, obviously, uh, this is... Um, we, we've got a start date of the 6th of, of February for this right. first go-round. 
Uh, but several of the people in Vance wanted to know, is this their only shot at it for 2023? Are there other alternatives, other options? Yeah, so it's a good point. This is obviously the first time we're doing it, but the plan is now to run this one before Easter, and then we will deliver the course again starting in June and again starting in September. So there'll be three chances to do it this year. Um, obviously, we will be trying to improve it and, and keep things up to date. Um, whilst this isn't really about necessarily current affairs or the news, there are always interesting things happening in international relations that might need to be factored in. So it, whilst it might not be exactly the same, the idea is to make it as good as it can be at any given moment. So we're having this kind of info session right now. You know, a, a number of people who have already expressed interest, a number who have already signed up for the course. Uh, we have advertisements running in Business News and the Mandarin in Canberra. Uh, I wonder if you might, as somebody who put together the content, uh, you might give us a little bit more of your own assessment as to who's this for? Who would benefit for this? For those that are watching this, who else should they share it with? Who should they do it together with? Who else needs this information? Yeah, well, I'll come back to my new sort of byline is that international relations is everyone's business, but it's not everyone's background. And that if you are... If you find yourself, and so many people do now, you know, working in a government department, working in a business, working in the education sector, where increasingly collaborations and projects and strategy uh, relates to how Australia has ties internationally. So if you're someone who perhaps for whatever reason took a path through law or engineering or the arts or any other path that didn't really touch on these kind of important geostrategic issues, then this course is for you. There's no assumed knowledge, really. Um, it doesn't require you to have a background in, you know, working in any kind of international projects. It really does you can see I've made a glossary that goes with it. I, I do understand. I, I confess I don't have a background in international relations. As, a, as an engineer myself, I remember when I came to work here, um, I think I often tell people this story, listening to um, listening to people on panels and, and at our events and in our discussions talk about regional architecture. I remember thinking, well, I know what regional means and I know what architecture is. Somehow you put those two words together and I'm now my brain is what regional architecture. So things like strategic competition. So words like that that are so used. And I think, Gordon, you wouldn't maybe you don't hear them anymore. I hear them on panels. I hear them in the news. I hear them in, you know, see them in media releases, I read them in reports. This course is for someone who is starting to engage in those ideas, but wants to catch up I guess fill in that bit of not their knowledge that they think look I just really would like a bit of a of a context setting in terms of trade defense diversification our emerging relationships ASEAN alliances those kind of things that sometimes you can feel like you're the person who does you know sort of miss that day in school that you're like well hang on a minute I need to catch up I'm hoping that this is a bit of a one-stop shop where you can you can you can do that and it's quite a hopefully people are getting the idea Gordon and I are very approachable it's okay if you if you struggle with something or you just keep thinking oh goodness I can't I need this explaining again this is the safe place for you to say here's all the materials here's all the the glossary and the the bespoke resources we've made but it's a place to learn you're not supposed to come in really with any knowledge at all oh fantastic so as somebody who spent close to 35 years now in the field, um, it's pretty clear that just being in international relations doesn't qualify you to build anything. <laughs> so somebody like Dr. Kluwert, who has a PhD in engineering, to build a, a program like this is really, really helpful. So I wonder if you might talk a little bit more in detail about what you've built. So uh, um, you've outlined quite clearly uh, what the, the eight weeks are going to look like. Uh, mm -hmm. If I understand correctly, there's one hour of yeah. kind of a video content. It, is that just somebody talking at you? What is what does that one hour look like uh, over the course of the eight weeks of the program? Yeah, it's a good question. And you know, international relations is full of talking. There's a lot. It's it's how you know the business often works. But I think you'll find when you when the Monday rolls around and you access the class content, which is one hour of content delivered to you, it is a mix of a number of things. So there will be some videos to watch. Uh, Gordon, I think you're in most sessions. Um, I always introduce it, so I give an overview of what that content covers. 
And then you'll see a range of content. Sometimes you'll be listening to a clip of a podcast. Sometimes you'll be asked to read a PDF. Sometimes you'll be asked to go to a web link. And then there'll be some time to do some practice questions. So that whole thing, including the reading, would take about an hour. So I have factored in the reading time, the thinking time, the doing the tasks, reading the discussion boards, all in the entire class time. But I think I looked just before we started, and I think across the video presenters, the podcast guests, the report writers, and other invited speakers, I think there's about 35 different content contributors to the course. Uh, some of them we already had from some of our materials, so from our webinars and podcasts, and others I have especially filmed for the course. So I've asked them to particularly deliver a piece of content that doesn't exist anywhere else. Well, so if you're watching this information session, you've already decided that you're tired of Gordon Flake's voice. Uh, you can be assured that it's not eight eight weeks of me droning on at you for an hour straight. Uh, at least it's done a magnificent job of putting together relevant content uh, that helps uh, explain you know the the key themes that are a focus of that week uh, in, in some great detail, and then a lot of kind of references that you, where you can do deeper diving. Uh, we've got some some good questions coming in, um, and if I just kind of start the first one, it's just um, if, if you're not in this field, if you're not in um, uh, international relations, if you're not working on the Indo-Pacific, but, but do you want to be? Is, is this a, a course you advise people taking? Well, yeah, yes, I I certainly would, and really, when I think about it, that's who I've pitched it to. Um, you know. People on the call now that I know come to our events, whether it's our roundtables or our larger public events or our webinars, who work in an area that they're passionate about that has an international flavor to it. And they very much feel that whilst they, they're comfortable in you know, attending events and meeting people, they never see themselves as you're being able to participate in the discussion. They just, that's something someone else does because they feel like they don't, quite know the context or the terms or they don't they don't feel like they can participate fully so when I was building the course that's what I was bearing in mind it's not um you know deeply deeply academic it doesn't rely on um, a lot of academic types of reading um, most of the reading people will do are reports um, that we've intended for a broad public audience so we're a very inclusive community at the Perth US Asia Centre. We're always welcoming of people who want to get involved in international relations. And I think people feel that there are barriers to getting involved because they you know, didn't formally study it or their role doesn't formally require them to do it, that they feel that then it's not for them. And that's essentially what we're trying to overcome here, that there's people who just who want to fill in some gaps in their knowledge um, across maybe trade and defence and, and other themes we explore, energy, space, critical minerals, education, all those kind of things. Okay, let me ask the flip side. So if somebody already has a degree in international relations, which is pretty broad, mm -hmm. or is already working, say, for their company or for the state government uh, on the region writ large, what benefits would they be for somebody... Uh, who's already working in the field. What, what, yeah. what would this course? Well, I imagine it would depend on how long ago that person might have studied. This is a very contemporary course as well. Like the, the issues and challenges facing Australia and the opportunities um, deserve kind of current discussion. So, you, you know, we very much look at the diversification imperative, um, modern, more modern concepts around our relationships with ASEAN, uh, you know, the evolving nature of our relationships with the US and with China. Um, and the issue as well is you get to ask questions. So whilst it's 100% online, and essentially you can feel like you're doing this on your own, the webinars and the discussion boards mean that there's a community there as well. Um, the course is intended for anyone in Australia to do. Um, it's clearly made in WA, but it really is for anyone um, across Australia to do it. So if you're looking to look at those contemporary subjects, and again, it's not obviously not going to replace a degree or a master's in international relations. I do find people who've studied that tend to be very passionate and want to learn more and more. So look, like I said, we're open to all comers. Um, I think it's, I've been fairly transparent on what it covers. And there's an opportunity as well to apply the course to your own situation 
um, each week you're asked to look for, say, a media article or uh, um, a speech from an MP that you think relates to the course and, and reflect on that. So I think there's something in it. I mean, obviously, it's up to everyone's personal preference, whether they think it's for them. Okay, quick question, just to clarify, um, and, I, and I think you, you've covered this pretty well, but um, there are eight weeks in the course. At the beginning of each week of the course, the new content for that week will be released. Uh, but to be clear, that content will remain available throughout the entire course. And so if you're on holiday or you've had a really busy week at work, you can go back and retroactively catch up on things that you hadn't done before. Is that correct? You can. You certainly can. And if, if by session seven, which is about diversification and why we need to change these, you know, change some of our future relationships, um, you know, if you come across a couple of terms that you want to go back to session two, then that's completely fine. Um, yeah, but it stays open. And even after session eight, you don't have to kind of finish it all by then. You've got another two weeks. So, look, we're all grown ups. I'm sure lots of people have attempted online courses before. If you, if you everyone's got good intentions in the beginning, um, but I've tried to make it flexible that, look, the last flush of energy at the end, you can get to week seven, eight and think, oh, God, I've got, you know, I'm still in session five. Um, what you will find, though, is that the discussion boards, so where other people are sharing their content, there will be people doing it in the week that's live. And that's where I'll be paying, you know, that attention. So if you get to week eight and you're starting on session one, I can't guarantee you're going to get a huge amount of attention. I mean, you might, you you know, but if you've got a lot of questions back about the beginning, so you get out what you put in, I guess I'll say. Well, thank you. And again, I would here emphasize something that's quite unique about this is that uh, compared to a lot of, you know, you can do an online course on YouTube and just go watch YouTube videos, um, uh, but they won't necessarily be curated over the course of eight weeks like this. Uh, and there is a personal element of it. The fact that there are, in, you're engaging through the chat function, the fact that three times during the course of the eight week court, you're going to have a webinar where you're going to be able to ask questions and clarify dispute <laughs> if you're so inclined in terms of that process. So there is a human element uh, yeah. that isn't uh, just, so you're not just passively watching something. But that that in your previous comment brings me to another question that we just got in the online chat. Uh, and that is how much time are you anticipated, or how, do you anticipate that people would need to dedicate on a weekly basis? And so obviously the argument for doing what human nature compels most of us to do, which is to procrastinate to week seven, is that it gets harder. You might jam in seven videos in the last week but there are additional activities. So mm. what are you looking at in terms of an average time commitment if you want to do this course? Yeah, that's a really great question. I'm going to say about another four to six hours. Now, if you're a fast reader or you find getting through um, other activities, you know, you quickly can go to your glossary. I, I've tried to say that's the maximum. So I am required to for this to qualify as a micro credential to to fit a certain number of hours and and we also know of course that it's okay to watch the class content but really a lot of the deeper learning happens when you go away and apply it so really the hour of the class content would then on top of that somewhere between four to five out five to six hours depending on how fast a reader you are how what kind of style of learner you are um, on all of the tasks you'll see when you get in management system, I have tried to indicate how long it takes. So if you've got half an hour on a Tuesday night, as opposed to maybe you've got some flexible time on a Friday, you know, three or four hours on a Friday morning, it will say your task now is to go to the glossary, find two or three terms that you'd never heard before and post them on the discussion board um, with what you think they might mean. This this task should take you 20 minutes. So I've already said, I've said this will take you 20 minutes. So if you've got half an hour, don't pick something that's going to take two hours. You can do that later. So I've tried to say, this is a bigger one. This is a smaller one. So it's quite, it's quite granular that you can dip in and say, oh, I can quickly do this one now. I'm reflecting back on my own college experience uh, uh, 30 plus years ago. And, and I often worry that I cheated myself out of a kind of university education because they're the core requirements of what you have to do. But obviously, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. You know, the more seriously you take the additional activities, the more you use it to internalize uh, and make sure you're understanding rather than just passively watching is, again, which this is what this is what makes us different than YouTube, right? 
You can yeah. watch videos all day long, but you're just passively watching. If you really want to internalize something and understand it, there's other activities. And that, to be honest, uh, in addition to the tremendous work that Lisa and her team have done collating and putting together this very carefully curated eight weeks of content where there's a there's a narrative that flows throughout it. That's one thing. The other part is actually then all those specific activities and quizzes, et cetera, that make it meaningful. So thank hats off to you on that front. That's okay. And I'll just say, look, I haven't designed these tasks just to keep you busy. They are all designed to embed that learning and to have you go off and think about international relations in the media or in your in your state or in your business. So they are they are aimed to have you you know be able to use the terms you learn. And I hope people are reassured to know that I'll be on the discussion board, checking the discussion board every day, and I, I will bring in other members of the research team. So there is, it's not an, it's not just a sort of a big void. You write something about, oh, I didn't think I understood this term, or it, it looked different on this page, and I don't think I understood it when I saw it over here. There will be people to talk to and ask. So hopefully that's reassuring. Very good. We're, we're getting towards the end here. We want to be respectful of your time. And, and this course itself is intentionally respectful of your time. Uh, I just want to repeat something just in response to a last question that popped up on the chat. Um, it, yes, this course will be run three times during the course of the year. So the first go around uh, is, is going to be starting on the 6th of February and it'll run for eight weeks within two weeks grace at the end for you to finish up and do the final uh, quiz, et cetera. Uh, and then twice more during the course of the year. As you can tell, I hope both from listening to, to Lisa and myself, we're quite excited about this. You know, we we talk about this stuff every day, all day long. Often we are not just preaching to the converted, but we're preaching to those people who are directly in this field. And the real benefits come from those in business, those in state government, those individuals who who, whether it's for personal passion or professional passion, want to have a better understanding of the region in which we live. We think this is going to be really helpful. Uh, we're going to be continually improving. The process as we go along, but we think it's quite interesting. We hope all of you who have taken the time to sign up for this uh, webinar will, will take the next step. We've intentionally kept an extremely low price point, right? I mean, for, for college credit, for eight uh, week course, uh, I think it's $330. Is that correct, Lisa? That's right. Yep. Uh, it's relatively small. And you will also understand it's also a psychological thing, right? It's, we want people to, to pay enough that they will value and actually do it. Like most of the events we do, if we do it just for free, you know, something else comes up and you miss it. So we want this to be done. Our hope is that you'll uh, take this information, share it with others. We're going to do We are doing a quick recording of this discussion. We'll put this on the website along with the other advertisements. Feel free to share the link with others within your enterprise, within your company, within your government office. Uh, and if they can't do it this time around, or if you don't want too many of members of your team doing it this time around, by all means, uh, you can. they can do it on later iterations of this. But on behalf of the Perth US Asia Center, thank you for joining us. We're excited about this. I offer my personal thanks to, to Dr. Lisa Kluett and her team who have put this together. Uh, and we're, we're excited to see where it goes from here. So thank you for joining us. We look thanks, forward to Godin. seeing you on the course. Appreciate Bye, it. Bye, everyone.